Hey everyone and welcome to another HitFilm Express tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to animate, also known as keyframe, in HitFilm Express. Today's video tutorial is going to be rated 2 stars out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It's a beginner tutorial and I'll go through things for a pretty basic beginner level, but you're going to need to have some level of understanding in HitFilm to get things going here. But before we begin with today's tutorial, just a quick reminder to sub to my YouTube channel, Shiny Films. If you want more hit film tutorials like this one and other editing tutorials as well, I have a ton of stuff, and follow me on Twitter at Shiny underscore Films. Anyway, let's get on into the tutorial. One of HitFilm Express's greatest features is keyframing, because while you do have a ton of effects and everything, you have the full uh, amount of keyframing controls you have in the Pro version in the Express version. I'm going to start off super basic, super simple. I've got a blank project open here, and instead of starting to keyframe in the editor, I'm actually just going to start keyframing in a composite shot, just so that we get a little bit better of an understanding, because keyframing was kind of brought into the editor in version 8, I'm using version 8. If you don't have version 8, you kind of need to get it, because it has some updated keyframing features, but version 8 or above, uh, and you should be good to go. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new composite shot, and if you don't really know, a composite shot is basically where you'll be stacking layers on top of one another doing compositing and visual effects rather than linearly, so it's useful for visual effects and animation and keyframing and really perfect for what we're doing today. So just hit new composite shot in the media panel um, and I'm just going to name, name my keyframing or whatever. And also just a quick tip in the uh, duration here, if you don't know what the time code is, basically you have hours, minutes, seconds and frames. So I'm just going to make mine two seconds long, and I'm just going to hit OK. I'm just going to select both of my little clips here, and I'm just going to drag them in, like so. And we've got a nice little background here, as well as a logo of HitFilm Express. How fitting. So we're going to start off by keyframing, um, let's say, the rotation of this HitFilm Express logo, just to get things started. And by keyframing it, I mean like animating it over time, and actually baking that into the video rather than just you know moving it around like that we actually want it to move around like that in the video first thing i'm going to do actually is going to go into a different workspace if you just hit the little grid button up here and you just hit compositing then it'll switch over into the compositing workspace sorry let me just get rid of this which is much nicer for um it's much nicer for doing keyframing and all, all that kind of stuff because you have much bigger controls and you have a, a no trimmer, which is much nicer. So anyway, let's go uh, straight into the transform. Make sure you've selected your logo or whatever you want to keyframe. And as you can see, the dial here for rotation, we can drag the value around or type in a specific value. We can also change this kind of stuff if we open up the layer down here. And uh, we've got the same controls here. And we've got actually this whole area here, which is where our keyframe is going to show up in our timeline, which is going to be really useful. So I'm just going to set this rotation back to zero here. And to start animating keyframing, just go to the frame where you want your first keyframe to start, where you want your animation to start. I'm just going to go to the very beginning of the comp here. And I'm just going to select this little circle button here. I'm just going to click on it. And that will activate keyframing for us. You'll notice a couple things happened here. First of all, the circle turned blue. And also we've got this little diamond shape here, and we've got a little dot inside the circle here. So the diamond here is actually our keyframe, and it's basically telling HitFilm, at this point in time, 0 frames, 0 seconds, we want the rotation value to be this, which is 0. And if we just move the playhead a bit, you'll notice that this little dot gets out of the circle. Basically the big circle means that when it's blue, keyframing is enabled, and when it's grey like this, keyframing is deactivated. And we've got a little dot inside, it means that on this frame there's a keyframe. And I'm just going to go to the very last frame here, and I'm just going to rotate it, say, 180 degrees. Oop, yep, there we go. And we'll notice now we've got another keyframe here. And basically that's how you add a keyframe. If you just change the value, then it'll add a keyframe for you. There's no specific add a keyframe here button. It's just you change the value and you add a keyframe. And so I'm just going to go back to the beginning now and you'll notice if we play it back, that's really how simple it is. 
you just rotate it and you're done. Now I'm going to rotate it more even. Let's do two revolutions plus 250 degrees and it goes much faster as you can see. You can drag your keyframes around like this, make the time between them shorter, do what you want. That's how you keyframe rotation. You can also keyframe all kinds of other stuff as well like position. Uh, let me just get this back. Uh, I'm just going to set a keyframe for position here. Just going to go through this quickly and set another keyframe over here. And with position, we get this little line here. And that'll show us where our logo is moving. I'm just going to quickly go back into editor keyframing now because editor keyframing is what you'll be doing a lot of the time as well. Um, if you just want to quickly keyframe something, I mean, if you're in a composite shot, you're likely doing, you know, more complicated visual effects. But if you're in the editor timeline, maybe you're just keyframing the volume of audio or something, or the opacity of a certain video layer, or just moving something across the screen really simply. Well, you can do that in the editor now as well. If I just grab my logo, I'm just going to just grab my logo. And if we go into the controls tab up here, I'm just going to quickly reset the layout so that when you're editing, you kind of know what you're doing as well. Just make sure you're in the controls tab. And you can't really open up the video layer like you did in a composite shot. Instead, it's a little bit more tricky, um, but it works basically the same way. If you go into the transform, if we let's just scale it down, move it over here. Let's set a keyframe for position, activate keyframing, move forward, change that. Now between the two keyframes, it'll move like so. But if you want to visualize your keyframes, you can go into display timeline over here. And we can just extend this out as well and zoom in a bit as well. And oh, now we've got a little bit of a timeline going on here as well, where we can see our keyframes kind of side by side. So we've got our opened up space over here and we've got our extra editing timeline over here. It's a little bit finicky, but it works just fine. And you can change, move the keyframes around, adjust them with this little timeline here. Now I'm going to go into more complicated keyframes. So, I mean, you could stop watching the video here, but I mean, if you actually want to learn hit film, uh, you actually want to do something uh, with keyframing, I would suggest watching for a couple of these extra steps. With this position keyframe, I'm just going to drag something around the middle here. Let's drag it up as well. And then at the end keyframe, I'm just going to drag it back down. So let's play this back and let's just see what happens. Moves up and moves down again. But you'll notice something a little bit strange happened, uh, which you may not have expected to happen. We got something called spatial interpolation happening. Um, and basically what happens is you can see the path of the thing, it kind of curves through here, like so. And HitFilm did this for us automatically. We didn't tell it to curve, right? But HitFilm just did it for us automatically. That's because we've only given it three values. We've only said, be here at this point in time, be here at this point in time, and be here at this point in time. And everything else in between for all these frames, it just has to fill that in. And so it's doing the best job it can, and sometimes it's even smoothing it out for us. But we can even change what happens spatially in between these keyframes. So if we just highlight these keyframes, if we just hit right click, you can see we've got two types of interpolation. I'll get into temporal a little bit later. But spatial interpolation, if we hit linear, you'll see that now we just get it straight going up and it hits the point and kind of spikes up there and it goes straight back down. So that's, you know, if you want some linear action. But generally with position, I mean, it depends on what kind of effect you're going for or what you're using this for. But if you want it really smooth, you can just select that, you know, that auto bezier and it'll make it nice and smooth for you. You can even select a manual bezier like so. And you can see we've got, we've got these little handles uh, which we can drag around to create our own custom curve. So if we look at this, I'm going to create a little even more spike, a more accentuated spike than before even. You can just do that by dragging the handles around. And we can see now the curve goes down around this handle, just down and then up and spikes up like so. It may take a little bit of time to get used to these handles, but you'll get used to them when you start playing around with them. So there you go. That's basically spatial interpolation. 
Just going to delete this middle keyframe. Actually, I'm going to delete all of these keyframes for position now. And just going to zero it out. And we're going to talk about uh, something called temporal interpolation, which is basically where the same thing happens, um, but over time. And I think the best way for me to really uh, show you guys that is using rotation, because it's only got one value, which I'll show you what I mean later. So uh, in rotation, I'm just going to keyframe it again. I'm going to make two revolutions, let's say. And yeah, that's pretty fast, so I'll just make one. And um, we're just going to go and now change the temporal interpolation. We don't even have to right-click here. If we just right-click, I'll just show you anyway. Right-click, temporal interpolation. You can see there's no spatial interpolation option because rotation doesn't really have that. So we see we've got, what, six, six little uh, options here. Linear, smooth, 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 manual, bezier, and constant. But we can see we've got these options here. That's what these little icons are. These are temporal interpolation keyframe types. So we've got linear, constant, smooth, smooth in, smooth out, and manual bezier. So let's just uh, play it back at linear. Let's see what happens. It goes straight from one all the way around, turns to the other. Let's go to smooth now, and let's see what happens. You can see it kind of slows down at the beginning and slows down at the end, speeds up slowly at the beginning and slows down at the end. So you can see how that's a little bit smoother. You've also got smooth in, where basically it'll start off fast and slow down at the end. And you've got smooth out, which is kind of the opposite, as you can see. And then you've also got constant, which is useful if you're doing like flashes or something where It'll just stay at that keyframe, and then as soon as the next keyframe hits, it'll just switch over to that keyframe. But, of course, you can't see it here because it goes straight from 0 to 1, which is basically like the same rotation. So you can't really see that in action right here. But you've also got good old manual Bezier over here. And again, that's how we manually change it. By default, it'll give us a smooth curve, as you can see. But we can edit this in the value graph. Now the value graph is really just about the best thing about the keyframing in HitFilm Express. If we open up the value graph by just clicking on the button here, um, then you can see that we've got um, a little graph. We've got time on the x-axis, and we've got on the y-axis up and down, we've got our value. If we're animating rotation, we'll show our rotation. If we're animating opacity, it'll show our opacity you know, so on and so forth. And we can see that over time, we can see what's actually happening, what this curve looks like to our graph. If we just go back to select linear, we can see it just goes straight from zero to 360, all right? But if we select smooth or manual bezier, it will create a nice smooth curve where it'll slowly move up to 360 and slowly move back down again. And we can use these handles just like before to create whatever kind of interpolation we want. So, for example, we can make it speed up at the beginning and slow down, like that. Or we could do a, a mixture of both. You know, we can create whatever kind of interpolation we want just by adjusting this curve. And that's just about the coolest thing uh, about this keyframing here. And it's really useful if you want to create, you know, those super smooth animations like this one. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated when you have uh, different values in there and you add in spatial interpolation. You can even see the effects of spatial interpolation in the value graph as well. I'm just going to go to the beginning here. I'm just going to remove uh, keyframing for rotation. I'm just going to scale it down a bit as well. Let's go into uh, position, let's say, and let's just create some basic position keyframing as well, like so. Oh, did not mean to, got to move it over there first. Yep, there we go. <laughs> okay, a bit confusing with the timeline there. So now we've got two values for position because you've got your X value. We've got, we're on a 2D plane here, right? We've got our X value and we've got our Y value. So our left and right, our horizontal and our up and down, our vertical. And our X one is our red one. So we can see these values change differently over time because, you know, there are two values here. And... Um, if we just select um, these keyframes, 
and we just hit uh, right click. Actually, let's just create, let's just see the effects of spatial interpolation on the graph as well. Let's just do that because we can. Move this guy down. And uh, I'm just going to move this guy up in the middle as well. Oh, not too far. So we can see how each of these kind of change over time. Now, if we grab um, uh, all these keyframes and we just hit right click, spatial interpolation, and we just select linear, we can see how it just goes straight and then straight down. And then this one's just straight as well. But if we select again that, that Bezier, it'll curve it for us. When you get the um, manual Bezier with the time, just highlight these keyframes, select manual Bezier. Wow, then we have a really, we've got a lot of options here. A lot of things we can change. Now you can see over time, it'll go from this keyframe. If we're not even looking at the animation, we can kind of visualize it in our head. It'll slowly go to the middle point here, stop at the middle point, basically, and then slowly, smoothly move over into here. And it'll follow this kind of curve pattern that we see here, like so. So again, we can adjust this, say that we want it to be smooth throughout this middle keyframe as well. But what we can do is we can look at this, this curve. Let's look at the Y curve for now. Let's just look at this. We want this to be smooth going down as well, like that. And we can see that the way these two are linked is really cool because now the X curve is smooth as well. So let's have a look at that. Pretty cool, eh? So that's, um, you can mess around with this, um, find out, you know, exactly how to use this. But that's basically um, interpolation in a nutshell. And you can do the same thing in the editor if you, you know, open up this, this side panel timeline. And you've got your value graph here as well. So you can do all the same things in the editor basically as well. Anyway, that's basically all there is for keyframing uh, in HitFilm Express. If you did find this video useful, then please be sure to drop the like on the video because you know it'll help other people who need help like you to find this video. And um, also, if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel because, again, I have tons of other HitFilm tutorials as well as other tutorials. My channel might just be your lifesaver. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. Stay shiny.